Yes, Mr. Chairman, there are two papers that um, uh, target for containment. Item number one, ordinance number 2012-4. Um, that paper is to be continued. And item number seven, ordinance number 2012-141. Thank you. <clears throat> this time, you know, motion to approve uh, the continuances. I move to approve the continuances. I second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. They're approved. Okay. Uh, Mr. Clark, we're going to move on to paper number eight. Would you read that paper? Yes, Mr. Chair. Item number eight, ordinance number 20-202. To adopt an amendment to the master plan, to be known as the River, Richmond Riverfront Plan. Okay, you want to read all? I mean, actually, I'm going to read the folks there. You want to read everything? Yeah, yeah, that, that section. Item number eight, ordinance number 2012-2022. To adopt an amendment to the master plan for the city of Richmond, adopted by the City Planning Commission on November the 6th, 2000. And by the City Council by Ordinance Number 2000-371-2001-11, adopted January 8, 2001, to be known as the Richmond Riverfront Plan. Okay. We have somebody here to talk about this program for the city. I guess we need somebody to speak to it. would 
require to be come back to before the um, city for special use and meet all the requirements that are required as part of that process and realize that any development is still subjected to the approval of the city um, through the special use provisions. However, their, their concern is that if we pass this plan as it is currently stated, with the language that is incorporated in there, that we will be creating an extreme adverse impact on their abilities to even market or pursue any potential development, irrespective of whether or not they would make it through the uh, SUP process. My question is, have you received copies of those proposed amendments uh, for the um, mail island and as well as the USP property? I think that's the term name of it. Um, Madam Vice President, I have seen language regarding Mayo. I have not received anything regarding USP and cannot comment on what the suggestions they are making. I have many comments on the Mayo Island of it would like to hear them, but on the USP one, I'm <coughs> not sure what their language is, I'm not sure what they're asking for, um, but if I might, if I could just address a couple of those issues that are raised in your question, if I might. Number one, this thing, this discussion that somehow we are playing uh, loose and free with the language in the downtown plan vis-a-vis -vis the riverfront plan, I am very distressed at. I can show you a PowerPoint presentation tonight, if you would like, 14 slides, I believe, showing word for word from the downtown plan, matching word for word in the riverfront plan. I have said on more than one occasion that anybody out there who catches us changing language as it relates to the plan, I will be the first to stand up and suggest that there's something happening. I have reviewed both plans multiple times, have gone back word for word in the section in the downtown plan referencing the river portion of the plan, and in the downriver portion of the riverfront plan, and those words match identically. So if there's somebody out there who is suggesting that we are playing mischief with the wording, please contact me at 646-6305 so we can have that discussion. I feel confident that we are totally consistent. Number two, both parties have in the past, or certainly the Shia parties have in the past, suggested that somehow their property is not subject, as we mentioned last time, to 1413. I can show you four or five instances in the adopted, as amended downtown plan from 2009, where there is specific language saying that the city should acquire Mayo for a central riverfront park. <coughs> Some of that language, oh, that's, and in the amendment says that if we decide not to do it, there's a, a policy that we need to go through as it relates to public access and all of that. That language is very similar for both the USP parcel, and in fact, as Councilman Jewell wanted me to double check, there is language in the amended plan that came from council that talks about preserving building heights to preserve the view from Libby Hill Park towards the river in the amendment. We have said in the, in the, in the riverfront plan, the big difference between the downtown plan and the riverfront plan, if I might, is that I believe in the discussions we had with the river in the downtown plan, that when we came back for the amendments, there was language in there that suggested, I think, that there was some equivalency between doing it as open space and doing it as development. The big difference with the riverfront plan is we took a good hard look at what those costs are and suggested that maybe there isn't an equivalency, that developing Mayo Island, a, a island that is in the floodway, where there are significant restrictions on use before you start having to put in a secondary means of access, that there are, it's in the flood, between flood walls, there are a host of issues related to the development of Mayo's Island that in the estimation of Hargraves and its teams suggested going in another direction. 
Likewise, at USP, there are still very significant issues regarding sewer relocations, flooding issues, and access to any development there that is, again, may have a residential, lodging, or hospitality hotel component. Irrespective of what happens with this plan, they're still going to need to go through 1413. They're still going to have to go through floodplain activities. And no matter whether or not we have to have that secondary means of access, we will have, they will have to abide by our codes as it relates, as it relates to development in floodways and floodplains. So if we adopt the plan tonight and we come back and amend it, all of those things that I just mentioned are still hard and fast issues that any development needs to look at uh, as the, any project goes forward here. We have more questions for <clears throat> all of I know, I, I think <clears throat> that I'm very sensitive myself to people that own property and want to develop. As, as we talked earlier, I wouldn't want to put something in in way that can preclude the opportunity to develop property that you own. And I think that there are folks who are going to look up the public comment shortly, and of course, to Ms. Robinson, she has to speak, um, that will clarify the thoughts that they have. And I think that we need to address those thoughts and look at them, entertain those thoughts. That's the process we have in front of us. But then, with that, I'll turn it to Ms. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Connors. Um, and let me just say um, to the staff, to, to Mark, um, you know, I'm sure you've read this document more times than you wish to read it, and you probably could almost quote it. I'm not questioning your um, statements. I'm not questioning the accuracy of the statements. Um, I am not suggesting that um, that there is absolutely a difference in, in what is in the master plan and what is being suggested um, with the riverfront plan where there is difference. However, what I am seeing is that the information that I have received from the developer suggests that the language that is used, not whether or not it's the exact same or not, and I understand that's where you are, this where you are, um, arrest in your case, that the language that is used is not, it creates an impediment for the developer to be able to market their development to do the type of development that they would like to see happen. And they are asking that we amend the plan accordingly. Now it's my understanding that you have received from one of the developers representative the recommended proposed changes to the amendment. And I'd like to discuss what those recommended changes and how you feel about those changes. And I would also, I also ask Steve Taylor if he would bring to us a copy of the other proposed changes for the other site so that we can talk specifically about what is being proposed. Because I would like your professional input and advice as it relates to that. Okay? That's the, that's the question that I'm asking. I'm not asking or suggesting that, you know, 2009 versus the riverfront and whether or not there are changes. However, I am saying that if what is true, if what is being shared with me is true by both property owners, and as it relates to the language in the riverfront plan, that that language does suggest to me that it could be rather restrictive and I would like for us to entertain the proposed amendment that they are asking for. Okay? I don't have Andy, you have to I don't have let me we've had a couple of meetings with Mr. Conlon and his client and I think they were open and frank discussions. Uh, as we like to say. Um, they want to have, on the Mayo Island, they would like to have language in there that suggests that um, development of Mayo is uh, a viable alternative. 
or they want us to have language in that says if the city is not interested in purchasing, um, that we have, that there are certain standards that they need to make. Um, my, my suggestion has been, as I've looked at crafting the answer, is that we go with if the city does not pursue acquisition, because if we say if the city does not pursue acquisition, we are fully consistent with the downtown plan. I cannot stand here today because we have not seen a development plan that would suggest that there is a viable alternative to it, um, given what I said earlier about the significant challenges about developing that parcel. Um, so I'm not in a position to say today whether or not there are viable alternatives or not. I think we are in a position to say that all things being equal, as the downtown plan said, open space is better than a development, but if, a if the city is not interested in acquiring the parcel, here's what needs to get done in order to make that happen. Uh, on page 66, they talk about redevelopment of certain uh, commercially viable structures. I would suggest some changes in that language because I'm not sure what certain commercially viable structures are. There is a specific list of, of uses that would require a secondary means of access. We should be straightforward about that and state exactly what that is. Um, this area is in a flood wave. There will be flooding. Anything that's ever been on Mayo Island one time or other has washed away. To suggest otherwise that somehow flooding is not part of the life on Mayo is not based in reality and we should be mindful of that before we do any development in there. Uh, <coughs> There is no record of sanitary sewer off uh, Mayo's Island. And we're not saying that that makes it undevelopable. What we're saying is that's another one of the costs and another one of the constraints that the site has to be developed beyond additional access. So the point I'm trying to say, Councilwoman, is I think there's a way we can get to something that would work for all parties understanding that I think what we have said historically is that the city would like to pursue acquisition. In fact, if you go back to the 1984 downtown plan, we go back almost 30 years, that's been kind of a consistent theme. But if the city doesn't acquire and development does occur, that there are certain standards that any redevelopment needs to make in order to make uh, full public access to the river off the island. I would add one last thing too, which is that irrespective of the cost of those issues to address the constraints would not come back to us to say that we have to reduce public access because the cost to make the site developable requires an intensification of use that reduces public access and use of the island. So I would add that. So I think there's something here we can work with. I haven't a clue about the other one, but I've not had a chance to read it and review it. Thanks, Steve. Steve, you have a copy of that. Would you like to pass that on the floor to you? 